Welcome to the video where you're going to be learning about displaying data. Now I think that most of you probably are familiar with the bar graph, the circle graph, and the line graph, but we really want to be um, thoughtful about how to use each one of those. So in the vocabulary section it says that a bar graph is used to compare data in distinct categories. So we may not use a bar graph if we have to do a different type of purpose with our data. So a circle graph is going to show data as parts of a whole, okay, parts of a whole. So think about when we have a set of data and you're being asked to display it in a certain way, which type of graph that you're going to be using. A line graph, as you'll see on the back, shows how data changes over time. So we're going to look at each one of these types of graphs, and of course you probably have seen them in other textbooks, maybe a science textbook, Maybe you've seen them on the internet when you're doing some research, but in this particular lesson, we want to know when to use each one and what each one is showing us as we're working on, on creating them. So for any type of graph, is it, imp it is important to include a title. So across the top of your uh, graph, I would like you to include a title that describes the data that's displayed. And then it's also important to put labels either on the X and Y axis, so across the horizontal uh, spot or up the side there on the vertical spot. You want to describe what each axis is showing. And if you're making a circle graph, you want to include some labels in each section, right, so, to, so that we know what each section represents. And then we also want to include values on the graph. So whether that's, you know, the numbers going across this way or whether it's a percentage or a total number in each section of a circle graph, you want to just make sure that you have labels and values as well as, well as a title on each type of graph that you create. So let's go ahead and look at example number one where we're going to be making a bar graph. And this again should be sort of review but at the same time, I want you to really think about how you're creating each graph that you do for this lesson. So for this example, we're going to be making a bar graph, and the bar graph has two axes. It has the horizontal axes, which goes along, along this way. We also refer to that as the x-axis. And then it has the vertical axes. Generally, if we're looking at x and y points, this is the y-axis. So. The horizontal axis is labeled with um, a category, okay, using some words, and then up the side is generally divided and has values up the side. The y axis generally has the values. Now, the data are not related, so the bars do not touch. I mean, they're related in some way because obviously we're putting them on the same graph, but um, baseball doesn't have to do with football, doesn't have to do with basketball when we're talking about a survey that we took of each individual student's favorite sport. So if let's say we interviewed everybody at Centerline High School, everybody that was willing to participate, and we found out what their favorite sport is. Well, if 150 students said baseball and 300 students said football and 450 said basketball, then we could represent that on a bar graph. So we would put a title and we would also include labels on there. And then, of course, we would show the values up the side. So let's start with that. Let's put the values in 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. And, of course, we want to label those. So a graph is not complete without all of these parts. So I really want you to think about all of this stuff before you start, you know, creating your bar graph or your circle graph or your line graph. Now that we have our divided values up the side, um, we also need to start making some categories along the bottom. So I'm going to make a baseball, football, and basketball. Now I probably could have drawn them in a different direction in order to fit them in better, but I didn't do that. So. The title, I also need to put a title on here. So I'm going to say favorite sports of centerline students. So this is just an example as if we took a, you know, took a survey. So if I want to show that baseball had 150 people, I'm going to estimate that 150 is just between, halfway between the 100 
and 200. So 150 people said baseball, and I have to come over here. 300 people said football. And again, they do not touch. There is a space. Notice that there's a space in between the two bars, okay? You don't need to draw the squiggly line, but I'm just showing you. And then also the 450 mark is somewhere halfway between the 400 and the 500. So I'm going to come over here and show that 450 people said basketball was their favorite sport. Now I do need to make some um, labels on both of the vertices. So this one is going to just say sports. And the one on the left or the vertical one is going to say number of students. Number of students is what that says. Sorry, it's a little messy. And so I want you to remember all of these things, not just, you know, the numbers are important and that kind of thing, but you want to remember all of the little details when making your bar graph. And on the back of your note sheet, we are going to do example two and example three. In example two, it asks us to make a circle graph, and sometimes we call this a pie graph or a pie chart. Um, because we are going to divide this circle up into pieces of pi, but the pi pieces have to be related to the values that we see in our table here. So a circle graph is used to show how a certain quantity is broken into parts. So we have 100% of, you know, if we add these three numbers up, that's going to be 100%. And we have to divide our circle into different portions to show 14%. Uh, 31% and 55% and we want to do that to show how that whole 100% is broken down into parts. Okay, so parts of a whole is what we show on a circle graph. And you want to make sure that you label the sections with text, that's words, as well as values. So I don't want to just see the words burn it, but I also want to see the value 14%. So if we did a survey or got some information from the internet and put a title here, what we do with trash. Okay, so when trash goes out, 14% of it gets burnt, 31% uh, gets recycled, and more than half of it goes into a, a landfill. So I don't know where this data came from, but uh, let's go ahead and graph it. So half half of the circle, if I went right down the middle, that would be 50%. Okay, but I have to do that uh, just slightly more than 50%. So I'm going to say that here, the solid line, is my 55% that goes into a landfill. Okay, and then the rest of this space over here, the rest of my my graph has to be divided into the 14 and 31 percent. Now 14 percent is going to be a slim amount so I'm just going to make that maybe right here and 14 percent of our trash gets burnt. Okay so we burn and I can't fit it in there but try to fit it in the actual slice of the circle graph put burn it in there and then the last part about 31% is going to be recycled. So I'm going to try to fit this in here and please try to fit it in as well. Recycle. Okay, so again, uh, there is a specific way that we can calculate how much of the circle um, we use for 31%, but it's going to be about one third of the circle. So that's what I have here and 14%. Um, I'll show you in class how we can actually calculate the exact amount of the circle that we can use for 14%. But I know that 55% is obviously just a little bit more than half, so I try to demonstrate that here. So again, when you're creating a circle graph, I would like to see the labels as well as values in each of the sections and a title as well. All right, we're going to wrap this up with example number three. All right, making a line graph requires that we plot some points and then connect those points and create a line. So if we take a look at the example down at the bottom of the page, we have a title, okay? The title is bean plant. It probably could have the words bean plant growth because they're showing us growth of the bean plant over a five-day period. Um, 
in, in this information that we have, I want you to take from it the idea that there's an independent variable and a dependent variable. And the x and y coordinates on the graph are related to those two variables. So line graphs can be used to compare two or more sets of data. They can also just be uh, used to compare one set of data or show growth over time. Okay, so here's the time down at the bottom. So each day the plant grows. So the independent variable is the one being changed during the experiment. It's always placed on the x-axis or the horizontal axis, okay? What did I know before the experiment? That's how you know what to put on that horizontal axis. This is the question you ask yourself to determine which one is independent. Okay, the dependent variable is the result of the independent. So because time passed, the bean plant grew. So this side right here, the number of centimeters the bean plant grew, is the result of time passing. Okay, so we have time, which is independent. It's going to happen no matter what. And the growth over here is our dependent variable. And you don't have to add this. You don't have to include which one's independent, which one's dependent. But I want you to be able to tell which one is which. So what did you learn by doing the experiment? So once you planted the bean plant, what did you learn? That's going to be your dependent variable. That's why we're putting down here the number of centimeters that the plant grew. Okay, so each day we plotted how much the, uh, how big or how tall the plant was, and now we can see over this five day period that it grew up to 2.5 centimeters. Okay, so a line graph shows data over time, and sometimes we can compare more than one set of data. So, what if we wrote down here? vegetable growth and we we plotted several different plants that were growing we could do that as well okay so we're going to practice all three different types of graphs in class please make sure you write down any questions that you have and bring your completed notes to class uh, tomorrow thanks for watching